So it's a good thing I got a heavy duty truck because if I had my half ton back in the day, I would not have been able to take this load. Payload would have been maxed and the truck would have been riding on its axles. But it doesn't even look, look like the truck is even sagging at all. I mean, it's just a little bit, um, it's leveled out nicely. Okay, I have been inundated with questions. What am I doing about lumber prices? Is it affecting my prices on jobs? Is it affecting my business? Have I noticed a decline in uh, calls? Are people not doing jobs because they feel like prices are going up? This is actually happening all over the country. And I wanted to say, I wanted to make a video on this subject because this is a critical part I've done um, so far three parts on business, um, you know, operating a woodworking business, especially out of your garage. And this is a time where I don't think anybody has, has actually foreseen this to happen, right? And it kind of took us a little bit by surprise. Here's what kind of happened around here. I think we were delayed a little bit. Um, the East Coast, Midwest, and you know, various other places around the country have been affected by this and maybe around the world. But I can tell you firsthand that in my area, we were not affected by the prices of the materials that I use, um, nor, you know, the, the cabinet grade materials. However, some plywoods did go up, um, like AC type plywoods, construction grade plywoods. Those did go up quite a bit. Um, I'm kind of going to go over this in a couple different ways. One is the pricing of the stuff, and the other is the availability of the stuff. In, in my situation, I've got jobs booked out to about six months. That's about our backlog. That's my backlog. And when I bid jobs, I tell them very upfront. I don't want there to be any surprises. I always tell them, look, this is the way you're going to be 12 weeks, you're going to be 16 weeks, you're going to be 20 weeks, whatever it is. You're, I tell them and I want them to know so I don't have this surprise down the road. This is a real crazy time because if I bid a job, let's say three months away, um, and the prices, we had never seen these prices go up. So in my 20 years of doing business, we've never seen an in increase like this. In fact, my pricing has gone down on my materials in the last, let's say 10 years, um, especially on my um, favorite materials that I use you know, weekly, daily. So for me to have a price increase, like I'm gonna tell you, it actually did affect quite a bit. So let me start off by saying those bids that I put out and those jobs I got, let's say um, two months ago, and I get ready to start building those projects, right? This is a situation that I just, I have to say, kind of came at a little bit of a surprise. I went to go purchase materials for a job uh, and I couldn't, you know, you, you can't purchase all the materials for the, the year worth of jobs, right? You just, there's no way you can do that and you shouldn't do that. Um, I don't think you should ever have that much material on hand, but you definitely want to have enough material to get you by the jobs that you're doing and then, you know, the next couple of jobs. But for me, um, I was needing some material. So I went to the lumber yard and I said, hey, I need to grab some material. And the guy's like, hey, let me see if we have any in stock. And I said, what? Hold on a second. You've never not had it in stock. And he said, oh, he's like, we have it. No problem. And I, and I was thinking, OK, so nothing's changed, right? So I said, let me just grab six because that's all I needed for this job. I needed six sheets of this material and I needed a couple sheets of some other stuff. So he said, OK, so we put it on. I paid for it. I, I went out and um, the forklift operator brought it to me and he said, hey, Dave. And I said, what? He's like, what? how did you get this material? Because, you know, did you know that we got some in stock? And I said, no. What, what do you mean? He's like, we just got it in stock on accident. I said, you're kidding me. He said, no, we, we've been out for two weeks. And I said, all right, well, that's interesting because um, maybe I should grab some more. And he said, Dave, you should because we got seven units and we're already down to three. So, and that was just in two days. And he said, if you come tomorrow or the next day, most likely they're all going to be gone. Um, this material is like hotcakes right now. So everybody wants it and you can't get it. So... Long story short, I went back into the office. I said, hey, 
let me grab some more. And um, I said, let me grab um, 15 sheets more. Then, so basically what I had was a load up to the top of my truck. Um, and then I said, wait, let me grab some more. So I went and I dropped these off and I went back and grabbed, I think 10 more sheets or 12 more sheets or something. And um, so basically the picture I'm showing you is of my shop after I've, you know, returned and loaded them up. It's basically like, you know, three feet from the wall and that's just material. So I'm loading up. And the reason I'm loading up is because I had to pay double what normally I always pay, okay? So um, this cost me twice as much in order to produce this job materials wise. Now the materials on a job in some cases aren't so high, so that's not really a huge deal, but in the, you know, in the fact of the matter is I've got a ton of jobs that are lined up and they're all the same material. So the, every single job now has just doubled in my cost for materials. Um, now, once I got all this stuff back to the shop, I could only store so much, right, as you, as you can see. And that's a critical element because you can get, you know, pricing, you can get, you know, whatever, all that stuff aside. If you can't store the stuff, you can only buy so much. So you can kind of get what I'm going at. You've got to get what you can store in your shop. So if you're in a garage shop like I am, you don't have a ton of room, so I can't store a bunch of stuff. I can only store a little bit. So I grabbed whatever I could um, bring back, and then um, I went and grabbed another load. So both of those loads, um, I think it's 38 sheets that I got in total. And um, then I went and grabbed more from my other supplier who actually had six sheets of half inch and um, three sheets of one inch. Believe this or not, seriously, this is what they had. But this is crazy. I mean, you know, when has this ever happened? It's, it hasn't happened in my experience. Um, so I ask why this has happened. Well, they give me all sorts of reasons why. Um, shipping is, is, is causing problems. The ports are so slammed with backlogs. There's ships, literally there's ships out in the sea that are circling around the harbor. And where I'm at, we actually have a harbor, right? Los Angeles area is pretty big with that. There's literally ships. You can look off into the distance and they're just circling out there for days, for weeks. They're not able to get in here because the docks are so slammed with um, ships. It's taken them forever to offload all this stuff. Well, another thing is there was, you know, a freeze in, in uh, Texas that actually had um, negative impact on this whole thing as well. Um, plus we have COVID. So the COVID shut down factories. Um, of, it was like the perfect storm. All three of these things happened at one time. And we've had um, the bark beetle, right? Um, COVID, and, um, the freeze in Texas. So those three things combined makes it, to me, that's like the perfect storm. So combining all that stuff, we have had a crazy time with materials and cost of materials and availability. So as a business owner, my, my biggest thing is that if I don't have materials, my business stops. To be honest, I don't really care what the price is because you can adjust those, I mean, to a certain extent, but if you don't have them, you can't build your job out of, out of nothing, right? So, and I don't, and I'm not building a job, you know, out of material that's completely inferior. That, that doesn't work. So you basically, you, you go to find what you can get. And if you can't find it, you just keep calling and you keep calling and you keep calling because maybe by chance they'll get some in by accident, just like mine did, but it's close. Um, so that's good enough for me. Um, and I can tell you that I'm super excited to have the material in the shop. And um, as you saw on my you know trip from the the lumber yard, my truck was full and I'm really grateful that I actually had a heavy duty truck and not my half ton because I would have been overloaded in my half ton. So I'm glad I had the heavy duty truck, but um, just wanted to um, let you guys know that in this situation, the best thing you can do is just grab whatever materials you can. And really um, you're going to have to, at some point, ask yourself, whether or not you can call those customers up that you've already bid a price out to and told them what the price is gonna be. 
and collected deposits on these jobs, I've never, ever, not one time, called a customer and said the price is going to go up because of any reason. So if you have the situation and your pricing of the jobs has, was, you know, maybe on the lower end, um, then you could be in trouble. And you may have to call those customers and say, look, I price this job very aggressively. I can't afford to take this hit. You have to be honest with them because the last thing you want to do is go into a job and where you're losing money that's going to potentially put you out of business. So I would rather cancel a job on somebody if I can't raise the price. You just have to be straight up and honest with these people. Every single customer knows what's happening out there. They hear it on the news, they know. So if you are a painting contractor, if you are a builder, if you are like me doing custom cabinets, we all are in the same situation. Our material costs are going through the roof. That being said, like I said before, pricing of materials for this type of work, a lot of times isn't the biggest part of it. Time to build the cabinet is probably the most important part of a job and that is going to be the most part that you're going to make money on. So it's not necessarily going to be the cost of materials that could be a huge, you know, detriment. So if my cost on a job, let's just say a job costs $3,000 uh, to a customer. Let's say that $3,000 cabinet job, the materials cost uh, normally $200. Um, that's a, tw you know, $2,800 um, profit, right? based on that. Then you have to factor in your time to build the, the job. Um, so after you figure out all that stuff, you really need to think about, is the price of the material doubling gonna make that much difference, right? From 200 to $400, is that going to uh, affect your business and your, you know, your financial future? If not, then take the hit and don't worry about it. But if it's going to affect your financial future, then you need to make sure that you understand you have the, um, you know, you have to be honest with the customer and um, just be upfront and they're gonna understand. And look, if you lose a job over this, if you tell somebody you have to raise the price and they say, I can't afford it anymore, th that's okay. It, you know, things happen and you have to, you know, I would rather lose a job over this than do something where I'm losing um, so much time, so much money, and it's not working out for me. And actually that could effectively ruin my career if I do that. <laughs> this is not the time to be sitting back and saying, hey, you know what, I, I've got my materials, I'm good. You need to be constantly going to those lumber yards and constantly asking those guys. They know, what's up, man? Tell me, tell me what's happening. Where's the shipment? Do you have some coming in this week? What's the pricing gonna be? Do you, is the pricing going up? Um, is it sideways? Is it going down? If you're in a situation where you're actually having a lot of people bid against you on those jobs, your pricing might be a little bit lower. My advice that I had for you in the first video that I did uh, about business success was that you don't want to take jobs where you're, you're not making enough money on them. And if you do, you could really be putting yourself up for, you know, some serious failure because any hiccup in the job and it's going to cost you and you're going to get screwed. So it's better to just kind of, you know, have that extra cushion in those job prices, those estimates, so that if, if something were to happen, like for instance, what's happening right now, you have a little bit of cushion and it's not going to kill you. Now, if I were to go to a uh, Home Depot and buy a uh, two by four, <laughs> the two by fours are costing, I think like triple. Um, in some cases, I think it's like triple what they generally cost. That is insane. So um, a triple, that means that if you're doing a remodel on your house and your price, let's say it was 50 grand to do this, your job might just go up to 75, 80, 100 grand. If you're combining all the other things that have also tripled, uh, maybe cement as well. Oh my gosh. Um, and wire too, right? From, from uh, everything, electrical, plumbing, everything has gone up in price. Uh, it's this is a crazy time that we're in and uh, I, I want to also uh, make a note that um, there's actually a really good video um, Jonathan Katz Moses if you haven't seen his channel check it check his channel out he actually has some really cool uh, information on this very subject 
Uh, it was actually ironic because when I was starting to look into doing a video on this, um, his video came up somehow in my recommended um, videos about the price of lumber. And I was like, are you kidding me? Literally, I'm coming back from the lumber yard and I just feel like I just got raped. And I was thinking, I've got to do a video on this because it's just, you know, I've been getting inundated with calls and um, emails about this subject. I'm, you know, I thought it was really interesting that he actually put a video out and I think it was a really well done video. So if you ha have a chance, check that out as well. If you want to know like the, you know, the nitty gritty, I'm not doing research on this. It's just, I'm just talking, I'm just speaking from my own personal business um, experience right now. I'm not talking about what's out there in the world, um, you know, pricing structures and all that stuff. All I know is that prices are crazy. Um, at some point they will go down, but at this point, I think you just gotta, you just gotta load up, you know, you gotta charge a little extra on your jobs and, you know, just suck it up because that's, that's what we do. And, um, you know what, if you don't make as much money per job, you know, maybe your profit margin goes down a little bit. Um, that's okay. You know, you're still making a good living and you're doing what you love. So at the end of the day, that's what matters. And I, I was coming to the, um, I was coming from a meeting this morning. I had actually three great meetings this morning. Um, I went, I got a nice deposit from a customer. Um, we're doing a huge wall unit for them and they are super, super stoked about doing this job. So I'm, whenever a customer is super excited about it, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, so that was the meeting, the, the first meeting. And then the second meeting was, um, the same type of a thing, except a smaller cabinet. They also gave me a deposit for, um, and then the third meeting was my initial meeting of meeting somebody. And so that's three meetings that, um, in the course of, you know, between eight and 10 o'clock. Um, and on my way back from there, I just thought to myself, how lucky I am to get to do this. Think about this. You, I get to come home. I get to go into my shop, right? Wherever your shop is, I get to work on cabinets. I build furniture. I build woodworking projects. I build cabinets for people. What better job is that? I mean, you know, it's pretty cool. And I get to do this from the confines of my own property, my house, my shop. Um, I am pretty lucky. And I just got this smile on my face thinking to myself, man, I, I just, if you don't already have a business like this, just go out and just do it. Whatever you love, what, what's photography, you know, woodworking, whatever it is you love to do, just do it. Just do it for yourself. Be a business owner. It's really cool. Um, you know, but do it smartly. Um, hey, if you have any questions, again, I just love the interaction. Let me know what you think of this video. Thank you so much again for watching and um, we'll talk to you later.